Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Nate. We're going to be covering a DCS tutorial video today. We're going to be covering the use of the Mavericks in the Harrier in DCS. Um, I know I'm a little bit late. There are obviously other videos on YouTube, given that the Harrier has been out, I think, for almost a year now. Uh, in particular, Redkite has a really good set of videos covering the Harrier's capabilities and functions. Uh, but I did note that some of those videos were a little bit older, and obviously the Harrier being a constant work in progress, some things have changed. Um, so some of the visuals may look slightly different, uh, but specifically, actually more importantly, that the Harry's inventory has changed now, so you no longer have access to the AGM 65D, H and K versions of the missiles. Uh, two of those were TV guided, the H and K versions. Uh, the reason being that the those particular variants were never actually used on this airframe historically, so we now have a more historically accurate inventory for this uh, particular airframe of the Harrier. So we are now left with the AGM-65G, which is an IR sensor warhead, and the AGM-65E, which is a laser-guided laser guided warhead. Um, we're going to be covering the G model today, and we're going to be covering both methods of tracking and then launching the G model Maverick. Uh, the first method being using the Maverick's own sensor warhead to track and lock. The second using the Harrier's nav flare to assist the Maverick in tracking and locking a target. The latter method of using the nav flare is, in my opinion, significantly better because of its more powerful zoom. Uh, but you know, if you want to use a simpler way, which is the use using the warhead, then uh, this is how to do it. So we're about 15 nautical miles or so, I think we're 10 nautical miles or so from west of Kubleti on, on my little target range. Uh, we'll just go straight to it. So just a uh, disclaimer here, these missiles are pre-warmed as I'm using the mission editor to do these missions. Uh, in a full run from cold start, you will need to warm up the Mavericks. This took about two or three minutes. You warm them up by using the IR cool switch down here, and uh, that warms them up. Um, our targets are just dead ahead of us. I've turned on the icons just to make it life a bit easier for myself. So the first thing we're going to cover is using the Mavericks own um, IR sensor to track and uh, lock a target, then launching. Um, I don't think I've missed anything there, so let's just go ahead and try that ourselves. First thing I'm going to do is master arm on, switch to air to ground mode. On the left MFD, bring up the stores page. Then you can either use the IRMV button up there or the weapon selector panel, both work fine. And you'll see here that the missile is ready. What you need to do first is uncage the missile by using the missile uncage key, which you may need to bind. I've bound mine to you, and it'll give you the indicator that you've unlocked uncaged the missile. And once you've done that, you need to hit sensor select switch forward to switch it to IRMV. Otherwise, the missiles will not fire and they will not acquire a lock. Toggle the field of view by using the field of view button. Lock onto a target. They'll come up as little white dots and there, which will give you a few signatures. Put the TDC action key, lock. And the target is locked. This is away. See if we can fire off a second one before we pass the target. Again, same thing again. Uncaged missile. Switch to IRMB. Try and get a lock onto a target. Pull up, pull up. TDC action key. There we go. Let's get a lock. Pretty straightforward. And uh, not much to it. It is a little bit tricky to spot things. There's a hit there. And the second one. Good. All right, let's move on to the second method of tracking. So the second method of launching the Mavericks off the Harrier is to use the Harrier's own nav flare to assist the Maverick in seeking and locking a target. The advantage of using this method is that it gives you a bit of extra distance, as the nav flare has a more powerful zoom function than the Maverick's own IR head, uh, sensor head. The downside of this, of course, is that it involves a few extra steps. While not being too complicated, it is crucial you get the steps done in the correct order, and make sure that you are aware of your, what your sensors are doing, because uh, neglecting any of this will result in the missile not firing. Um, and especially if you're trying to fire off maybe two or more missiles, this becomes a bit more crucial as the systems will, you need to be aware of what the systems are doing, so you make sure you can fire the missiles off. So obviously initial stages remain the same. Master Armon, air ground mode, bring up your stores page on your left MFD. And I'm gonna use the active pause periodically to stop and explain what's going on. So the first thing you need to do is bring up your right uh, MFD to TV mode, hitting send select switch aft. The first one brings up laser search track, which we don't use. Second one brings up TV. Once you've got TV mode selected, bring your flight path indicator down towards your target area with the target. And TDC action to lock. The pause it here. 
once you've locked the target, use your TDC button uh, up, down, left, right to fine tune the TV to what you want to lock. Now, at this point, your right MFD is on TV, and the, ha uh, the Mavericks will not launch on this mode. So, uncage the Mavericks. Oh, I have to select Mavericks first, then uncage the Mavericks. Now, you'll notice that they do correspond. They are looking at the same thing. If you put it in the field of view, they are looking at exactly the same thing. But as you can see, the zoom function is definitely more powerful on the nav flare than the Mavericks on overhead. I'm going to unpause and track forward a little bit. Once you've done that, now you cannot lock on this mode because it's TV mode. It will not lock. You need to make sure you switch it over to IRMV. Once this is on IRMV on the right hand side, using the sensor selection was forward, your left display will also switch over to IRMV. Once that's happened, you will be able to get a lock. So let's uh, hit the TTC action, have a lock there, launch. Now, it's important to note, I'm going to pause it here, very important here, that once you've launched the missile, your TV goes back to INS, which is the default mode. So you need to switch it back to TV to slew the TV around. And again, using the TTC up, down, left, right to fine tune. Once you've done that, uncage the Maverick and it will be back on TV mode for both switch to IRMV using sensor select switch forward and that brings it to IRMV for both again and then you'll be able to get a second lock on the target and I'll pause and then it goes back to INS again so if I go back to pause you need to switch it back over to TV to move the target around Once it's on TV, you're happy with that, uncage the missile, set select switch forward, switch to IRMV, it's locked again. And once you lock it, it becomes a, a little, nice little square. Good. So, as, as you can see, you, you, can, you are able to get a better launch from a distance. Um, but there is a lot going on at the same time, and it's easy to trip yourself up and get stuck. So this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it does offer you a little bit of advantage in the, keeping the distance from the target and offering the full Maverick range. So that's it. It's really not difficult, as I said, but um, just keep at it and hopefully it becomes second nature. And if you have a HOTAS, of course, this might become a little bit easier. I'm currently using a keyboard for all this stuff. So, um, But yeah, that's, that's, that's it, guys. So that's it from me. If you guys have any questions, put it in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. And until next time.